Now, friends, we're turning to the Word of God this morning, and we're going to turn to 1 Peter this morning, 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3, please. And we're coming down to verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter number 3. And we're coming down to verse number 8, please, to begin our Scripture reading this morning. Now, remember the Apostle Peter is writing. And remember, he is being inspired by the Holy Spirit to write. And as Peter writes, he's writing under the instruction of God the Holy Spirit. First Peter chapter number 3, and commencing to read at verse number 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but countryways blessing knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Ending at verse 17, and we trust that the Lord will add His blessing upon that reading from His own precious truth. One of the great lessons I have learned through life is that this morning, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we have no control. We have no control over some people in the way in which they treat us. I want you to get that this morning. For many, that's a lesson I have learned. Sometimes, child of God, we have absolutely no control over how some people treat us. Even when them people treat us badly, We've no control over it. Now, what do I mean? We have no control over the way some people treat us. Well, this is what I want you to, to understand. Listen. You've said nothing, 
and you've done nothing to cause that person to treat you badly. You've done nothing to deserve that person from treating you badly. But they go ahead and treat you badly anyway. And what I've learned in life, child of God, is sometimes you've no control over the way people treat you. Now listen, I do know a number of people who have been treated badly, but the way they, the way they acted and the way their attitude was, they invited people to treat them badly, even though they shouldn't have. Because I do know a lot of people, and mind you, they invite trouble into their lives. Their attitudes, the way they behave. Sometimes they invite people to treat them badly. And maybe there's somebody in this service this morning I don't know, but God knows. And there's been somebody treating you badly. You have done nothing to deserve the way they're treating you. In fact, you've gone the extra mile to be kind to that person. You've gone the extra mile to win that person. But it's been no use. And maybe what hurts more, maybe what hurts more, that person that's hurting you is a Christian. For many you Christians can hurt people. And Christians shouldn't be hurting people. There's some people I know today professing Christians. on the way they treat people in the workplace should be ashamed of themselves. And other Christians, the way they treat some of their family members, they should be ashamed of themselves. I wonder this morning, child of God, are you being hurt this morning by certain people? Any person this morning that treats a person badly, listen, it's bad. It's wrong. And I'll tell you this, it's evil. And I hope this morning that there's no believer in the fellowship of Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle who sets out to purposely hurt people. Do you remember the way Saul treated David? All through his life he hunted David down like a dog. Now why did Saul hunt him down for like a dog? At the end of the day, David saved Israel against Goliath. But yet an old David, David was hunted down by Saul for no reason. In fact, the Bible says he hunted like for David, like as a hunter, hunters as a partridge in the mountains. I wonder this morning if you've been hurt, child of God, and maybe that person who has hurt you is a Christian. They don't talk to you. They ignore you. Now here's a wee lesson the Lord wants you to learn. The problem doesn't lie with you. The problem lies with that person this morning. But even though the problem doesn't lie with you, the responsibility lies with you as to how you react. Because mind you, dear child of God, our text this morning that God wants to speak through certainly shows us how we should react when people treat us badly. Now, what does God want to speak to us on this morning? What does the text this morning? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's 1 Peter chapter 3. 
and it's verse number 9. Now let's listen to what 1 Peter 3 and verse 9 says. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrary ways blessing, knowing that there ye are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Now listen, child of God, if there's somebody making your life a misery, God wants you to take that situation, and instead of that person making your life a misery, God wants you to turn that misery into a ministry. What do you mean God wants me to turn this misery into a ministry? God wants you this morning to turn that misery into a ministry. Because God, through that, friends, wants you to be like Christ. Did you notice in Verse number 9, my text this morning, Peter was inspired by the Holy Spirit to implant three laws, three laws, as we encounter evil. Now listen, child of God, you and I encounter evil every day. And Satan this morning is working overtime to try and get you and to try and get me to trip up in our Christian lives. And Satan is out and out as much as he can to get you and I to ruin our testimonies. It's easy to ruin your testimony, child of God. It's easy to ruin it. And it only takes a split second to ruin your testimony. And in some cases, you only have to do it the once. You never get your testimony back again. When you encounter evil, child of God, and I mean everyday evils, especially when people treat you bad, I want you to notice the first thing Peter puts in here, the law of retaliation. What does Peter say? He says in the text this morning, not rendering evil for evil, nor railing for railing, but country ways, blessing. You know what it has been said? It has been said this morning, the depth of your heart determines the width of your response. Now, what does that mean? It means this. See, if somebody hurts you, your, full, your first impulse, your first impulse is to get even. Now, I wasn't going to tell you this story, but the Lord told me to tell you it. And just to prove to you, I'm only human. When I was 23 years old, I was just a Christian about three years. And we were at a certain place one night, and I was helping this man to carry some musical instruments out into the car. And there was these crowd of lads standing, and they were giggling and laughing. And I came out with my arms full with a speaker one night, and this boy stuck his foot out and took me. I passed no remarks, and he'd done it the second time, and he'd done it the third time. And by this stage, I was like a cattle boy. <laughs> And then there's another fellow, you called him John, and John was a softy. He was a wee bit like myself, a softy. Wouldn't have said boodle goose. And John, he was carrying stuff out, and the next thing he put the foot out, and John went down his mouth and nose. And I seen this happening. And I don't know what happened to me, but the nervous system in right, my right arm made my hand go like that. And I said to, him, to, to myself, son, if your father never taught you manners, I ain't going to teach you manners. And I just went up and I tipped him on the shoulder, bang. And I just walked away in my hands, my pockets. And for a split second, I said, I'll teach you. And the next thing I could hear this boy tearing up the car park after me. And I says, oh, here we go. Here's the battle of Armageddon. And I says, Lord, give me the grace just to keep my hands in my pockets. And he caught me by the arm. And the blood was running out of his top lip. 
And he began to cry and he began to apologize. He says, George, I deserved what you did there. I'm sorry, I didn't know. And he says, I know I shouldn't have done it. And please, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And by this stage, I was that small. I says, of course. He says, you called me George. How did you know my name, he said. He says, I heard you giving your testimony two months ago. And he says, you did not, you did not. I says, I'll never be speaking again. That's me ruined. That's me ruined. That's me ruined. But let me tell you something about that fella. That fella was a bigger lad than me. Somebody says, vengeance, sweet. Listen, I'll tell you, vengeance, not sweet. Vengeance, bitter. A couple of years after that, I was getting married. And who was the first person through our door to buy me a wedding present? The fellow I clipped that night. And every time I met that fellow, it was with bitter sweet memories. Do you see when you take your vengeance out and somebody, three people gets hurt? Do you remember this? Three people gets hurt. The person who you avenge gets hurt. Now, who's the second person who gets hurt? You get hurt. And most of all, God gets hurt. And Peter lays out the law here, friend. Listen, if there's somebody treating you badly this morning, listen, there's the law of retaliation, he says, rendering no evil, rendering evil for evil, or nor railing for railing, but country ways, blessing the Lord. Jesus says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisely you, use you, and persecute you, that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. I wonder this morning, child of God, is there somebody, and it's in the workplace, maybe in the university, maybe in the school, maybe in the family, and they're treating you badly. And it's going on at this present time. Nobody in this fellowship knows anything about it, but you know all about it because you feel the pain. Listen, this is what the Lord wants you to do. Don't you render evil for evil this morning. See that, Paul says, see that you none render evil for evil uh, unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and unto all men. Oh, do you remember the day, friend? Remember the day. 1 Samuel 24, you remember David was running and hiding from Saul, and he got into a cave, and Saul got into the cave, but he didn't know David was there. What did David do? David cut the lump of the skirt off him, and David thought he'd done a powerful thing, and you know what it says? It says, but David's heart smote him. His conscience got the better of him because of what he did. And many times you read through, friends, the book of Samuel, you'll see time and time again where Saul haunted David down. And there was times, friends, David could have took Saul's life. Ah, but David didn't believe in avenging Saul. He knew God is the great avenger. If you're encountering everyday evil, friend, listen, there's a law you're to abide by, you're not to avenge. In my last workplace, I had a fellow who worked with me called John Walker. And John Walker was one of the roughest men in Lurgan. In fact, the night when Davy Martin was here, I says, what about John Walker this weather? Oh, he says, but oh, he was a rough bodger. He was a rough bodger. So he was. Remember, John Walker one time run through a shop to get to the fella to settle a score after three years. But John Walker got gloriously saved. A walking miracle. And there's one night in our work... One day in our work, the managing director got to John and he started to curse at John and he started to make a liar out of John and shouting and roaring at the top of his voice. And I looked at John through the window and all I could see was John pushing the glasses up. And you see, when you seen John pushing the glasses up, you knew to get off sight. 
And this managing director, he was walking down like us here, and John just got the two fingers and met him here and just marched him back up like us here up the store again. And he said to the managing director, and I got off sight just in case I was called in for a witness. I got off sight anyway. But anyway, he just caught him like that and he says, listen, Paul, he says, you've made two mistakes here. He says, you make a third, and he says, I'll have your head bouncing that concrete floor. The fellow says, oh, oh, but, oh, but John, you can't do that. He says, you can't do it because you're a Christian. He says, it's because I'm a Christian, he says, and it's because of the grace of God, your head isn't already bouncing off this floor. See, when you encounter evil, child of God, don't you let the devil make you pay it back with other evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. Whoever you are in this meeting this morning, young or old, Young or old, render evil, not rendering evil for evil. The law of retaliation. Very quickly in this verse, there's another law. And it's the law of realization. And I think this is child of God where you and me need to get into this morning. Look what it says in verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil or uh, railing for railing, but countrywise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call. You see, the backdrop of First Peter, now for those of you who have been coming to the Bible class, you'll know this. The backdrop of Peter's first epistle was concerning the suffering of the early church. Peter was writing to Christians who were suffering terribly for their faith. Under the torturing torment and persecution of Nero. Peter was writing to Christians who were being tortured and slain. Writing to Christians who were being dressed up in skins of animals and, 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 and sent into the lions. Writing to Christians who were being crucified for their faith. Writing to Christians who were being covered in tar and set alight and have as human torches. You know, child of God, Satan still has means and methods to attack us, and that can be through people and through friends and through family this morning. And listen, listen, here's the lesson, child of God. We have to remember as to who we are. Does that mean, George McConnell, that I have to sit back and be treated like a doormat for people to wipe their feet in me? No. No. God doesn't expect you to lay back and for people to wait their feet on you. People, you can go to that person and show them they're wrong. Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 3, Thou therefore endure hardness of, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We're to endure hardness. We are called to suffer wrongfully. You know, child of God, this morning it's so important as to how we react because we've got to remember, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And this morning, child of God, if you're encountering some evil this morning, whatever shape or form it comes in, listen, even though you didn't do anything to invite it, you look upon this this morning as a ministry to shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing hit Saul more harder when David spared his life. Tell me this. When they tied the Lord Jesus to the scourging pole and they stripped him 
And with the Roman scourge, they left his back like a plowed field, like a plowed field. Tell me, did the Lord Jesus hate them? Did the Lord Jesus avenge? No, he didn't. When he was reviled, he threatened not. When they were driving the nails through his hands and feet, tell me, what did he pray? He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Now listen, child of God, is there somebody treating you badly? You're not to render evil for evil. In fact, you're to bless that person. You're to pray for that person. You're to let that person see the loveliness of the Lord Jesus. I know all about it. I had a certain person posted something very nasty on Facebook one time concerning me. I let the Lord deal with it. And I prayed for that brother. You do the same. And believe you me, it will take the grace of God to do it. And the sad thing was that person was another believer. You see, child of God, in this one verse, there's three laws on how to encounter evil. There's the law of, of retaliation. There's the law of realization. Thirdly and finally and finished, there's the law of remuneration, which means it means it means this. You do it right, God will bless you for it. Look what it says in the finish this morning. Look what it says. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but countrywise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call that ye should inherit a blessing, that ye should inherit a blessing. In verse, First Peter 2, verse 19, Peter says, For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. You know what C. H. Spurgeon says? C. H. Spurgeon says there is no credit. There is no credit in suffering rightfully. The credit lies when we with patience endure suffering, even when we don't deserve it. Listen, child of God, what does God want you and I to do when we encounter evil? This is what God wants us to do. He wants you and I to develop in us the qualities that are unnatural. Oh, I'll tell you, I've met some comedians in my day. Some comedians. But I'll tell you what God did. God used them people to make me the man I am today. And if we respond in a Christ-like way, what happens, child of God? What happens? I'll tell you what happens. Your anxiety becomes a tranquility. If you respond in the right way, your insecurity becomes stability. Your pessimism becomes hope. And do you see, when people treat you wrong, child of God, and you're encountering some sort of an e evil, do you see if you respond to the way that God is asking you and showing to you how to respond, do you know what will happen? You'll inherit a blessing for it. You'll inherit a blessing the Lord Jesus says, bless them that curse you. Listen, don't you be talking bad about them. Don't you say anything bad about them. Let them talk all about you. But don't you, don't you say anything bad about them. You bless them. You pray for them. You bring them before the Lord. 
And I'll tell you, you'll know the blessing of the Lord because of it. I'm going to finish with a lovely passage out of the Bible. In 2 Kings chapter number 5, there's a story. It's the story of Naaman the leper. And in that story, there's a little maid. And that little maid was out playing in the street one day. And the Syrian armies come along, and this boy just got down and swooped her of their feet and took her away down into Syria, away from family, home, and friends, kidnapped her. She became the little maid in Naaman's palace. And one day she heard Naaman was a leper. And this wee maid, she knew enough about Elisha. She knew enough about Elisha. I'll tell you, listen, this is what I'm stressing. Will you teach your weans the Word of God now, 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 and let it soak into them when their wee minds will soak it up like a sponge? Teach them now. Teach them now. I'll tell you why. This wee maid, when she was only a nipper, heard enough about, about Elisha. You know the lovely story about the wee maid? She must have been working in the kitchen and heard the news about Naaman being a leper. I'll tell you what she didn't do. She didn't say, glory to God, he's a leper. Ha <laughs> ha, he deserves what he gets, not at all. But the wee maid did. Even though Naaman's host wronged her and robbed her of her life. You know what the wee maid did? In spite of all that Naaman's host did, she said to her mistress, oh, Oh, that my master would know and go to Elisha, the prophet, be made whole. Even though what Naaman did, she wanted him to know that there was one that could make him whole. You know, child of God, listen. We have no control how people over how people treat us. And if there's somebody this morning making your life miserable, you remember this. We are called to be an example to that person. And we are still to show that person the love of the Lord Jesus. And through this life, you will encounter many, many battles. But keep going back to the Lord Jesus. You'll learn all the lessons you need to know. For when he suffered, he committed himself to him that judges righteously. When you encounter everyday evils, friend, We are to live by these three laws. And by doing so, not only will you know God's blessing upon your life, but others will know the blessing of God for it. So let us fight the good fight of faith. And may God bless his word to all of our hearts this morning.